Okay, uh, really quick shout out for Lewis Cartwright. Uh, hopefully uh, you enjoy this video. Hello. Hello <laughs> there. So this is the signal box. This is this is Hunter Load Station signal box. Yes. Excellent. So um, how's it all work then? It's it's all um, very robust Victorian um, mechanical signalling, um, and with a little bit of twelve volt DC. We control the trains between here and Brisbane and here and Highley and make sure they don't run into each other. That would be good. 160 years after it was made and the technology was developed, it all still works very well. So, and it mm. is, this sort of stuff is still in use on the, on the big railway in certain places. What it doesn't cope with very well is, is fast speeds and trains being quite close together. So that's why signaling's progressed. But for lines like this, this is still perfectly safe. And it's a joy to work with, although in the weather we've had in recent days, with it being so warm, it's also a right pain in the uh, whatever because you have to go out and make um, certain adjustments with um, sledgehammers and, and pry bars every now and again. So. <laughs> the old-fashioned hammer. Absolutely, yeah. Gates yeah. and hammer. That's it. That's, uh... So then uh, pulling the lever, that's effectively pulling a wire that's way down the... Yeah, um, the red levers and the yellow ones are signals. So those work wires and those let the signals go up and down. The blue and the black ones are for the points. The black ones change the position of the points so they can make a train go in a different direction. And for obscure reasons, the blue ones lock the points in place. If you've got, a and this applies still to the big railway, if you've got a train coming up to a point that can change its direction, if there are passengers on board, that has to be locked so the blades don't move. No. And the blue ones are the locks that once you've set a wing for a train, if it's got people on it, you lock it with one of those blue ones. So we've got a train coming in from Bridge North now, which is why at that end, that blue one is out to lock the route to make sure the blades don't move under the train. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's all it's, it was all brought into one place in a single box in about, uh, I think, the late 1860s, 1870s. Um, and they put together with these, which are the token machines. If you see us swapping those with the drivers, those are the permission for the driver to be on the single line. And if he's got one of those and the signal's off, you can be as confident as you can that he's not going to run into anything before he gets to the next station. So. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. No worries. One question is, when locos had started out at the end of the day, are going back single. Um, yeah, how did the tokens work there? Because exactly. if it comes back and gives a token, then yeah. there's another one that's got to come back. That's why we've got Does more someone than... jump in a car and take a token back now. <laughs> Initially, that's exactly what happened. Um, uh, Brim, when they decided that you had to need a thing to be in section, yeah. they basically had a broom handle. Staff. Now, if you go down to Kidderminster Museum, you'll still see some yeah. of them. It's staff working, and you, you you went into the section if you had the staff. Well, the problem is exactly what you've said. That's all right as long as the trains are going yeah. in alternate directions. Um, so, what initially they did decided to do was they made a mistake and thought it'd be clever to cut the staff into bits. So you could send if there were same trains going in the same direction, you send the, the staff in bits until it was whole at the other end, and then they could come back. Then somebody went, "Should we stop messing about?" Yeah. And the idea is that you have a stock of tokens. I think there are at least twelve shared between the two ends, yeah. and it doesn't matter if you're going to run more than one train in the same direction because there's enough in there to cope oh, okay. and the machines will only let one out at a time. Yeah? Yeah. So that's how you do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The problem is that we've had recently, if you keep running trains in the same direction, mm -hmm. then there's an imbalance day after day. You run out of tokens. And then you've got a problem because then you've got to get in a car <laughs> and take 12 down to back down to the other end, which does happen occasionally. And there are bell codes for it to say that What's called the S and T department signal oh, in not here in car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they they actually cheat, and rather than taking them out by bell signals and holding down, they actually take the top off the machine, and it'll take a dozen out, put them in a bag, and then they'll run them down to the other end. So, uh, 
in theory, if you write your timetables properly, it doesn't happen because you balance the movements, but you can't always do that. So there, there's, there's, uh, um, there are rules in there to, to allow you to correct that imbalance if you need it. But hopefully, like I say, because you've got that stock, you don't need to. No. And then you just pull the lever across. Okay. All right. So thumbs in the top corners. Right. That's it. Now. Yeah. Number three. So left hand on the top. Left hand on the top. That's it. And then right hand pulls the catch. Pull, 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 let go of the catch. There you go. Look up. And there's the signal dropped off. Yay. Okay. Now if you drop it back, so same procedure, you're going to pull the catch. And you can throw it back if you want. It will also go back by itself. There you go. Well done. And that's uh, that's changed that signal up and down, and yeah. Number three, yeah, which is the home that lets a, a train into the loop. If you need to know where things are, every signal box has a diagram. So if you find the number, yeah, yeah. if you find it on the diagram, that will tell you what um, what that lever does. That probably makes you a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm guessing this blue one locks everything on that side, and that blue one locks everything. Yeah. Um, Rich and Alton, I think that one. Yeah. Excellent, thanks gents. So that's Bridge North asking permission okay. to send us a train. And we've just held down. So at the Bridge North end, the signal in there will just have been able to get a token out. And that will be surrendered to us by the fireman when he arrives here, and he will pick up one that we will be able to get out to Highly. That will take him forward to Highly. So, and if you look, the tokens actually have the two stations they're valid, or sites that they're valid between actually written on them. So, and in theory, if you've got the wrong token by whatever reason, you can't put it in and use it in that machine. Uh, okay. It's, they are actually keyed on the end. So that they won't go in unless they're in the right machine. That's been awesome, thank you. Yeah, Appreciate it. Yeah, when I was about six months old in 1970. Yeah, George, are you going to come video now? Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry. Oh, sure. sorry. Sorry. That's a good story, actually. So carry on. Yeah, on. and um, steam engines make very loud noises, and uh, normally babies go start crying, and apparently I didn't. I just went, oh, what's that? So. And then 50 years later, I'm still here working on the signal boxes. Thank you for watching, and I did record other stuff on the same day as this, and that will be coming out shortly.